Toast radio? Toasted. Okay. Hey, uh, how would you describe your music? Because it's sort of punk, it's rock, it, I think it's also grunt and stuff in it. It's uh, it's r it's rock, and it's it's somewhat classic rock at times. It's uh, usually fast. Um, it's like stripped down, but not basic. Uh, no, I'm 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 good. It's just uh, it's sort of our our band is is somewhere between somewhere between Led Zeppelin and Daft Punk. Somewhere in there, our band exists. I think so too. It's a, uh, yeah. It's it's so difficult to describe music, so people have to listen to it. Then um, let's talk about some lyrics. Um, Little girl, for instance, love that song. What's it about? Little girl is about uh, Sebastian's niece, <laughs> and uh, when his uh, his brother and his wife live in this town that we played a lot, uh, the capital of Canada is a place called Ottawa, and so it seemed like we would be playing there every month or so and this was like when we were writing that song and so we we would be there while as her like belly was growing and then once the baby was born and uh and it was really interesting because we watched it happen and i mean you know we've all been around babies lots in our lives but it's that was one of the first times it was happening to someone really close to us and and it was being a good thing you know because especially when you're a teenager and someone's having a baby it's not not always the best thing no, no. but this was like you know on purpose and and uh, beautiful and it was real uh, I don't know we all felt we both really felt in, involved in a part of what was happening and Sebastian wrote a song about it because it's it's great and we're really into uh, people having babies I know that there's like this well there's a weird trend uh, in the western world where we've all put off having kids until we're quite old and then i mean in in america now there's actually like women's groups that go around to uh like businesses and talk to female executives and tell them like don't wait don't wait till you're 40 it's not going to work uh, Why not? you you run out of eggs basically right, okay. they have a finite number of eggs and eventually <laughs> and the the chances of uh, you having kids decreases, and actually that's why we so they promote. So they yeah, promote saying, like, people to get uh, kids early. Yeah, well, early they, well, they're just saying like you know, it's not it's not really right. You can't just wait forever to do it. Um, and it, we're uh, something that I I know that we our band just really believes in is the idea that uh, we're you know humans are animals, and yeah. I think the further we get, the further we get away from from our accepting that we are then the more we complicate our lives w way too much uh, and I think that you you end up being a lot happier the more you are in acceptance of like what you are um, you know like why do people work so hard so they can make a lot of money so they can like impress someone of the opposite sex you know what I mean and it all ends up boiling back down to that same thing and it's not like a dirty or like a uh, like not not in like a lewd like lusty way it's just like sex as a it's it's just reality what's your, uh, it's yours <laughs> call on me hey <laughs> baby oh wait uh, it doesn't work down here hmm. hey um do you want children yes um and I, by the end of next year i'll have one yeah. Yep. So it has to be made. No, no, it's not. Uh, by the end, by the end of next year, we got time. How old are you? Then? I'm gonna be 29. So. So, what age do you think like it's normal to get children? Uh, my parents did it when my I was born just after my dad turned 30. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty reasonable. You know. Yeah. But yeah. your friends do. Your friends have that too. Or, uh? Yeah, uh, the, a lot of my friends. So, uh, one of my friends has four kids. Okay. Same age. Uh, he's a he's a few years older than me, but not not Is that much. Okay. Uh, and he has really great stories. Uh, his his one daughter is like uh, 17, mm -hmm. and uh, he says it's it's a lot of fun to hit on her friends when they come over, <laughs> and, be, and be and be the creepy dad. <laughs> hey, let's talk about the music again. Um, what was the first single in America? 
Romantic Rights, okay. followed by uh, Blood on Our Hands, and now recently Black History Month is uh, the most recent single, and the last one from this record, actually. Black History Month? Yeah. Okay, what's that about? It's sort of about, like, it's, it's a little complicated. I guess it's, it's about the, the sort of when you look at cities, and especially in America, and you see them all decayed, and you think about how at some point, you know, someone looked at that place, and especially in America where there's so many, like, vacant buildings and, you know, things have been falling apart for decades. Um, you know, at some point, some architect was in that, in that city and looked at these places with, like, this romantic idea of how great it could be and, and put so much effort into building these, like, great places to live and work, and especially in our city as well. I mean, we have so many, uh, like, projects and in our, na our neighborhood is like housing projects and like uh, and they're the, like the roughest all uh, that's just North American they're always the roughest places to live you know like you know all the public housing in England as well mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's where we live is in, in, in those neighborhoods and it's funny because when, when they're designed someone's thinking this is a great this is a great thing and, and it's sort of like sad uh, it's sort of like a sad song uh, Sebastian kind of looking at the looking at the, the cities and sort of putting himself in the place of these architects that, that at once thought they were doing such a great thing, but it's just, you know. It, it ends up like, yeah. shit. Yeah, you can only do so much. The rest is sort of up to the people. Okay. Hey, um, one last song, a long question. What's the name of the band mean, Death From Above 1979? Well, That's, I think it's, an, it's, a, uh, it's a bizarre name, I know. Death From Above is the American paratrooper motto. And it uh, has been since the First World War. And so they have, if you go into any store that sells like old army stuff, and that's where I'd usually go to buy my winter jackets because they're the warmest yeah. and cheapest. Uh, there's shirts everywhere that say Death From Above on them. And it's got a skull and like a parachute and some wings. And one time I was, I was in this shop and I just thought, That'd be a good. That's a good name for a band. And just like the idea of something like uh, coming down on you that you know so destructive and also in, in some ways like unavoidable. Uh, and I just sort of like on a whim, I was like, that'd be a good name for the band. And we just uh, we went with it. And then later on, our record label in the states said, "There's death from above." Isn't isn't something that we could own? And uh, there was like some drama coming up with other uh, other things called Death From Above. There's actually like a lot of bands in America called Death From Above. <laughs> no way, really. But we're the only uh, we're the only popular one, I guess. And uh, is that so? I don't know more bands like the same name. Yeah, if I mean that, I've it's all the time. I'll get emails from kids like, "Is this your song?" Like, doesn't sound like you. I'm like, oh no, that's not us. So then. Uh, We added the 19, 1979 as the year Sebastian was born, and we just said we just wanted to pick something that would make it so that it was always us, yeah. and uh, and that's about it. I mean, it's weird because in a way we've become the name, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, so sorry for the rest. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. Like the the when naming something, you you don't. Yeah, we couldn't have known for sure that that's that it would have become as appropriate as it as it has become for our like sound, but that's just the way it worked out. And uh, I think regardless of what our name was, it was uh, we would have sounded the same. But the, it seems pretty fitting. <laughs> hey, when can we see you here back here in Holland? Because you're playing here tonight in Paradiso. When can we see you back? Uh, we'll be playing the Lowlands Festival. Right. And we'll enjoy that. I hope I, I'm I'm getting real into this whole festival thing. I these are the these festivals we're playing right now are the first festivals I've ever been to. Great man, that's amazing. We've never been to festivals. We don't have them in North America. That's right. That's so right. it's so no Lollapalooza. I know nothing. Yeah, all the they, you know all the things like that they tried, but they like no more Lollapalooza. It just went on for a few years. It was more like in the '90s, like grunge. Um, sorry about grunge uh, yeah, world. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I love grunge anyway. <laughs> It was in the time of the Grunge time. Um, but yeah, like we don't really have anything like that, so this is all great. And then I guess we're gonna, we we probably won't be back. We're, we're going back to make a new record through the fall and winter. And but this one is out already, isn't it? Because it's recorded last February 2004. 
Yeah, I mean, whatever it, whatever it says in here. But yeah, we'll be. It just came out also in America, then, or in Canada? Or? Uh, it's it's been out uh, it's, it's been out for a year now. Okay. Yeah. This, this, okay. Or no, wait. What I was saying, it came out earlier this year. Uh, Early 2005. Yeah, like I think it was out in January 2005 or September and October and the rest in like England and uh, in England and Canada it was out in 2004. So yeah, we're going into the studio to make a new record this fall and then we'll be back touring everywhere in the spring. Cool. I'll see you then. You will. Thank you very much, man. Thank you.